What's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna ride a 2021 Versus X300 in a variety of situations that range from twisty roads to dual track trails and gravel roads. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about the highway performance, but in the video, we're not gonna ride on the highway for a couple reasons. One, it's not that interesting, and two, the day that I was recording, it was tremendously windy out. So no audio would have really turned out from that, but we are gonna talk about what the highway performance is like. Now this bike was really graciously lent to me by a close friend of mine and I wanna give them a special shout out and say thank you so much for allowing me to borrow your motorcycle for a weekend. I really appreciate it, it was a great ride and I hope you enjoy the video. Now, you may also be asking yourself, why are we in a bar? Well, the simple answer to that is that I don't have studio in your house kind of money and my garage is incredibly packed with motorcycles, so there's no real space for filming and equipment, especially uh, right now when it's not super nice outside and I can't push everything out of the garage. So we're gonna film in the bar, and I think that's gonna allow us to keep things a little bit more casual. We can have a beverage while we do it because we're not out riding, and I think it'll be a good setup. So tell me what you guys think about filming in this place, whether you like it or don't like it. Uh, and if you feel like it kind of fits the low-key vibe of the channel or not. So without further ado though, let's jump into the video. We're gonna get out on Twisty Road with the Versus X300 and see how it does. So I've got the bike for a couple of days and today we're gonna do kind of an all-rounder ride. We're gonna do some highway, we're gonna do some curvy roads, we're gonna do some off-road. And before we get to the curvy parts of this road, I wanna talk a little bit about what it's like to ride on the highway. I headed on the highway for about 35 miles on the way out here, and where I live, the highways are 55 to 65 miles an hour. So you're probably really not gonna ride faster than 70. And this bike at 70 miles an hour is at about eight and a half thousand RPM, closing in on 9,000. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it has a 12,000 RPM rev limit. So you're only at about three quarters of the way through the rev range. And being a 180 degree parallel twin, this thing doesn't run out of steam on the top end like you would on a dual sport, like a 300cc KLX. It makes the bulk of its power in that top 25% of the rev range that you have available. And so when you're on the highway, it actually has pretty good passing power at 70 miles an hour. In addition, I've ridden this exact bike multiple times with its owner on the back as a pillion and that person is about five foot four and 130 pounds. I'm about five foot nine and 200 pounds. And I'll tell you that it gets along perfectly fine. You can put a pillion and some luggage on this thing and it's not gonna slow it down that much. It actually makes really great power. So I think when you compare it to some of the competition, it's not necessarily underpowered, but it is much softer on the bottom end because of that small displacement and it's parallel twin configuration. One of the things I want to say about this is that, you know, this bike has from the factory non-adjustable suspension, but it is a bit stiffer and more sporty than like my uh, 390 Adventure, unless you crank up the settings a whole bunch. So even though it's not adjustable, it feels really good. It really likes to dive down and carve through the corners. And I have an absolute riot ripping this thing through a curvy road. Honestly, you know, if you're looking for a bike that is kind of a do-it-all that you can put luggage on and travel with, that you can commute on, that uh, you can also even take off-road or take down gravel roads, that's gonna be fun on a curvy mountain road, this type of bike is, in my opinion, the best type. It's one of the best types to start with, I think, because it gives you a little bit of everything and allows you to kind of figure out what you like in riding. So with that said, we're gonna jump into some really curvy sections here. Cue the music.
That was an awesome twisty section. And as you can see, this thing just eats it up. I mean, it is a very sporty handling little bike. It's not a sport bike, but it's sporty handling. And I absolutely love that. I love the way it rides. The suspension is plush enough to be comfortable, but stiff enough to feel very confidence inspiring in those tight corners and those awesome switchbacks. I absolutely love the way it rides on the road and even on the highway. Like this thing is a phenomenal commuter bike, mountain road bike, highway bike. It's whatever you really need it to be. As long as you don't live in an area like California or specifically Southern California or Texas where the highways are 80, 90, 100 mile an hour traffic, this thing is gonna be perfectly fine. And for places like where I live, it is kind of the optimal intro level bike. For its price and its performance, I don't think you can beat it really. And I wanna say at peak power, this thing is making like 40-ish. It's pretty darn good and it certainly feels like it. It doesn't have any tech, but I don't think it really needs it. For the type of power it makes, you can basically ham fist this thing and not really worry about braking traction unless you're in really adverse weather conditions. So that said, you know, my impression of this thing on the street, on the highway, in the curvies is really good. I really, really like it. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make our way over to the off-road section. We're gonna do a little bit of trail riding with it and we're gonna do a little bit of gravel road riding with it and kind of see how that really great street suspension ends up working out on the dirt. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other specs on the bike that make it actually on paper fairly worthy. So we'll see you there. Before we get into the next part of the ride, I wanna give you a quick disclaimer. I nearly trashed all of the footage from this portion of the ride and the reason was that in getting ready to do the video and going off road, I was so focused on getting my camera angles set up correctly, making sure my audio was going, thinking about what I'm gonna say, where I'm gonna ride, all those things it takes to make a video that I didn't focus enough on having my gear set up and ready to go. So what you're gonna see is that throughout the ride on these two trails, I have my visor open and I'm not wearing goggles. I did bring them with me, but wasn't focused enough on my safety gear and my personal safety to wear them. Anything can happen when you're going out on a ride, especially on trails. You can fall and get debris in your face. You could come around a bend and take a stray tree branch right to the goggles. Or you could come up behind someone else who's riding and get roosted super hard. You just don't know. So it's really important to always wear all the gear. Make sure you've got good boots on, you know, that you're wearing good head protection and eye protection and that you've got long sleeves, good gloves, like all that typical type of stuff that you would need to ride, especially off road. So I wanna make sure that I'm communicating that this is more of a what not to do kind of thing. So please, if you're gonna go off road, make sure you wear all of the gear. I didn't do that here but I'm still gonna show you the footage because I think it was worthwhile for the exploration of the Versus X300 off-road, and I can at this point recreate the video. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into this off-road section, and we're gonna talk about the Versus X300 there. Okay, well we found us some dirt. Right now I am at the Rogers Camp OHB area, kinda of headed towards Brown's Camp. And I'm just on like the main road, so this isn't technically a trail. Uh, but, you know, we're going to kind of start here, get our footing on these stock tires, which, by the way, uh, I think they're IRC. They're like a knockoff of the Avon Trailer Rider. And they've got about 5,500 miles on them, so they don't have a ton of grip. And I won't really be able to do this bike as much justice off-road without access to better tires for this ride. Uh, but that said, we're going to do the best we can and just you know, see, see how well we can do on these stock IRC tires. Now the Versus, to its credit, has a few advantages off-road compared to some of its competition like the CB500X and the KTM 390, and that is that it comes with spoked wheels factory with tubes. 
that'll allow you to air down and it'll give you some more leeway off-road with how hard you can be on them. Now that said, I almost think it's kind of silly for it to not come with mag tires for a, or mag wheels for a couple of reasons. And that's first because swapping a tube is a lot harder than just plugging a tire and going. And I think that this is the type of bike a lot of people are going to get for their first bike. Uh, or at least their first adventure bike. And not having tubeless means that if you do have a puncture, it's going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. That said, I also think that new riders are probably not going to ride this type of bike hard enough off-road that they're really going to need those spoke to wheels. Uh, on my 390, I had to hit a rock going something like 35 miles an hour in order to actually bend the rim. And I don't think that most new to off-road riders are gonna be doing that type of riding on their Versus. You know, if anything, they'll most likely just be dipping their toes into off-road, in which case you really don't need that. And I think that the benefits of having tubeless tires on a mag rim would outweigh those of having spoked wheels. But that's just my personal prerogative. I could be completely wrong. Um, so I don't think it takes very much to set this bike up uh, for off-road. Like essentially, all you really need is a set of bark busters, a skid plate, and some Navier tires. You've already got spoke tube rims. And one of the other thing too is the way the ergonomics are set up on this bike is that the bars have a really high bend to them. So I can stand without being all scrunched over. And I really like that. I'm five foot nine. I think if you're any shorter than I am, you won't need any kind of bar riser. But if you're taller than I am, you might want a half inch bar riser just to make it a little bit more comfortable. But you don't need that. Like it's honestly got a pretty great bend to it as is. Now that said, there's a couple different options for skid plates and this bike has a smaller skid plate on it. There's kind of a small one and a big one that are available through T-Rex. Um, and it's not quite as protective, at least in appearance, as the larger skid plate. So with that being said, we're not gonna go super hard. Between that and the tires, I don't wanna break this bike, especially because I don't own it. But we are gonna hit some dual track trails right now. My guess is that it's gonna be fairly soft on the bottom end, uh, just because of the small displacement nature of this parallel twin so it's not going to have that instant power right off the hit but if you want it you can scream it up to eight nine grand i don't think an experienced rider will want to do that all of the time they're going to want that instant power to get over obstacles and do that kind of stuff but i think the the soft bottom end and still the ability to have that power for someone who's new to riding that should be pretty good because it it means that you won't lose control you're not going to whiskey throttle this thing completely into oblivion. So let's go and get on this trail and see how we do. I'm really excited. The bike is not very heavy, you know, it's sub 400 pounds. And even though the fuel is way up here, it's not really top heavy and it's pretty thin through the leg. My only real gripe uh, with the ergos for off-roading is just that the foot pegs are pretty small, but I think that's a fairly easy fix. I'm pretty sure there's large foot pegs available for this. Sounds good. I love it. Let's get it. It's going to start off nice and easy. First gear. Oh, look at that. Just tractors right up. Now, this thing's geared really low. Like, really low. Uh, which, when you're riding around in town, it almost it feels excessive. Because, like, I'm in third gear by the time I'm across some large intersections. It just seems ridiculous. Uh, but out here doing this right now, oh, this is great because it lets you just like trundle along and tractor up stuff. It's pretty cool. Oop. Oh, I'm engaging that rear ABS already. I think we're going to go left here and see about going down this hill. Oh. Oof. 
Boy, I can tell it's been a minute since I've been on a trail. Oh uh, yeah, not bad at all. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, it's a little more slippery when you don't have knobbies. Ah. There we go, there we go. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Whoa. Yeah, that definitely bombed the suspension out. But you know what? It handled it like a champ. It actually, actually worked pretty good. Nice. Oh boy. This makes me think I should have cranked up the preload in the back a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. At this point, I'm out here. Another advantage to this bike too, if you're new to off-roading, is that it has a pretty dang low seat height. I think it's 31.1 inches when it's stock. Holy shit. Oh, it's muddy too, it's slick. Whew. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so one thing I am noticing is that I got mud on my boots now and the foot pegs and the brake pedal specifically are really slippery. My foot keeps slipping off or slipping forward onto the heel. So I think if you want to off-road this bike, a set of um, a set of good cleats on your foot pegs is gonna make a world of difference. I know that I felt that way too about my 390. You know, the original foot pegs are canted forward. They're kind of slick, they're not very big. And then you go and you replace them with a good set of like Black Dog Cycle Works ones, and it's awesome. You know, it was, I think, one of the biggest improvements that I was able to make on that bike. You know, not just for the ergonomics of having the foot peg in the right place, but making it more comfortable on longer rides, not wearing my feet out as much, more stable platform and more grip when I'm in this kind of tough off-road scenario. So now we're in second gear. Second gear seems to be kind of where it's at. You've got a lot of range to work with. You can still go pretty slow. Like we're at 3000 RPM, we're going 12 miles an hour. You know, that's pretty good. It does allow you to lope it along and I'm pretty happy with that. Now I think you could gear this thing up so that first gear is a little bit more, uh, you know, friendly when you're riding around town. But what that might do is make it so you feel like you're kind of stuck between first and second gear when you're on trail. So, you know, try it out and see. But my recommendation is like, get it going at first and then give yourself second gear to kind of ride in. Oh man, this trail rocks. I like how thin this is through the legs. It's really easy for me to, to kind of grip, even with my knees. My knees are kind of right at the bottom of the tank, top of the seat, and it feels really nice. Like there's kind of a nice spot for them to fit right into. Yeah, I, uh, boy, this thing would be just a riot with some knobbier tires where you could kind of get into it. The suspension travel is limited. And even though it feels a bit stout on the street and it has a great handling characteristic for, whoa, for uh, twisty roads and all that, I think that off-road, it does still feel 
not quite as damp as I would want it to be, but I'm also a 200 pound rider. And I don't think that I'm the target demographic for this. And I also don't think that the, the actual target demographic for this bike is going to do this kind of trail riding with it. You know, it makes more sense to do this with a dual sport or with something that's, you know, got longer suspension. But, but don't let that dissuade you, you know? If you want something that's comfortable, comfortable to ride on the highway, and you want to go and do this kind of off-road stuff, this is not a bad option. This is a great option, actually. I actually quite, I'm quite enjoying this. I like riding this bike in general. I've got quite a few miles on this exact one, but this is the first time I've ever had it on a trail. And I have to say, it's, you know, it's impressing me. I really do like this. And even though it is soft on the bottom end, like don't, don't mistake that as there being a complete lack of power. There is plenty of power, you know? Like look at these hill climbs we're doing. I know it's flattened out, you know, on the camera and all that, but that is pretty good. Oh man, I can really tractor along at two and a half grand if I need to in second. It works really good. Now, again, I don't want to like create the impression that this is a dual sport per se, but for what it is for a small adventure bike, I think that you can run this with the best of them, absolutely. And the person who rides this bike every day, you know, he is one of the, one of my two main riding partners. And he's consistently riding this with me and another friend who has an 890 adventure and I'm either on the 390 or I'm on my Africa Twin. Does not have a problem keeping up. You know, he gets it just fine. Buddy. Here's a big one. All right. Damn. That is just fine. Oh, oh yeah. That power, though, you know? Honestly, honestly, punchier on the bottom than I thought it was going to be. You know, it had a. Had a nice rumble too, applying that power at that low RPM and just chugging up that hill. Good job, Versus. This thing is fun. And I think that, you know, we touched on it a little bit earlier for the money. I don't know that you can beat it necessarily. This thing, brand new in 2021, was I think $5,500. I'm not sure what they are now, but it's probably close to that. And like, boy, you know, it is really hard to get into a cool bike for sub six grand, especially one that has the kind of, oh shit, capability that this bike does. You know, I mean, look at everything else in the market. They're six, seven, eight grand now in the small displacement section. God damn. Oh, that was an awesome trail. Hell yeah. Okay, I want to do one more trail today. I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of ride this back to where we started. And then uh, we're going to have our little wrap up. Oh, that's right. I forgot. We got a rocky little thing through here. Look at that, second gear distractors. Man, that's good. Kinda nice to come out this time of year too when it's uh, a little less dusty out. One thing I'm noticing as I go along here is the, the bars on this. Although they have a really nice high bend that makes it very comfortable to stand for me, they're not particularly wide, like a dirt bike or a lot of other adventure bikes, and has a big front wheel, so 
it does mean that you gotta pull a little bit more into the bars just in terms of effort and pressure uh, it doesn't turn quite as easily but i think that for people who are using this bike for a lot of purposes which may include if it's legal where you are lane splitting and that type of thing having those narrow bars is probably pretty nice okay all right trail number one number one the Oh, Lee, God, just look at it out there, huh? Amazing. I mean, both scenic and challenging and fun. This is the, to me, this is the ideal kind of dual sport riding. Like, gorgeous, really fun, beautiful day out, comfortable bike. You know, just having a a good time. Cannot beat it. There's nowhere in the world I'd rather be than jacking around on a little adventure bike just like this way out here. I think that's what they call Zen, right? Ooh, look at the road way down there. We're a long, long ways up. <laughs> oh man, you know, these street tires really roll off those rocks left and right all over the place. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, if you're new though, I'm sure that's unnerving. But yeah, you know, this type of bike, if you can get a Versus, you should take it off road. Do it, have the experience, you know? If you're new to off-roading, this is not the ideal kind of bike to learn on, but you can learn on it, you know? And once you do, you're gonna love it, I guarantee it. That's it, free time guaranteed. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, other big upside to this, you can get your foot down pretty easy like I just did right there. So, even though the seat is really scooped out and I can't like, you know, really sit back over it easily, and especially because right now I'm riding with a big, big bag on the back full of my camera gear and stuff. I can still manage it over a ton of terrain. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. And, and having that big scoop with a 31.1 inch factory seat height, I can just put my foot down. If I really feel like I'm getting out of whack, it's really not so bad. That is awesome. You know, I can't believe that I haven't bottomed this thing out yet. This does not have a ton of ground clearance, you know, but it has been perfectly fine. I've kicked up a few rocks into the skid plate, but I haven't actually hit the skid plate on anything. Which is pretty amazing. And I think that the, I think five and a half inches of suspension travel that we're working with here is working really well. Yeah, it's not ideal. It's not 10 inches like on a really powerful big KTM or Beta or some type of like off-road specific bike. But it does a darn good job for what it is. And uh, like I said, this is just such a ride. You'd be hard pressed not to have a great time on a bike like this. I love it. <laughs> oh, golly. This is one of the best times of year out here too, out here in Oregon. It's like the 20, 8th or 9th or 30th, something like that, of September. And, I mean, it's, you know, it's 60s, it's sunny, it's just beautiful. Whew. After this, we've got quite a long ride home. And the thing about it is, 
you could do this on a dual sport and this part of it would be just as much fun on a dual sport but getting here and getting back would not be and i think that's the biggest advantage to this type of small adventure bikes whether it's this or the 390 or the cb 500x the himalayan whatever any of those bikes are infinitely more comfortable and more enjoyable on the road to, to these places the only time i could really advocate for you to get a dirt bike or a dual sport is if you have the capability to trailer a bike you have a vehicle that's capable of towing and you've got a trailer or access to a trailer then sure like totally do that if you want to do that and you're not that interested in riding on the road but not everyone has that access and i think that bikes like this really give you the opportunity to, to do all the things you want to do and then still uh save you that cost of having to like get something you would tell with or do all those other things with you know Whew. that looks like something i would bottom out on i don't know because i didn't go over it but i'm gonna try and you know not mess up the owner's bike <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure he appreciates that if he's watching Oh, look at how slow you can chug this thing if you really want to Ooh, all right i bottomed out my 390 like right over here somewhere yeah i was on that rock right there because i kind of missed that little that little spot in between them the last time i was here i think that was two videos ago Boy, it's a little hard over some of this technical stuff and you do got to watch the foot pegs because like i said you don't have a ton of ground clearance but i'm really not that worried about it it does such a good job and the wheelbase not being that long lends to both sporty handling characteristic oh jeez okay we're good we didn't get that stuck in there but yeah, the short wheelbase lends to both the sporty handling characteristic and also making it more difficult, giving you a more difficult to bottom out because you get a better breakover angle. And yeah, bikes have a breakover angle. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. Now, this bike is partway set up, right? It has a skip plate, it's got bark busters. It just doesn't have, you know, really knobby foot pegs or knobby tires. But honestly, I don't, I, I think that those couple little improvements would really just make this thing insanely good. Oh, hell yeah. That's nice. Nice trail. I'm starting to get tired, so, you know, I just think it's time for us to take a break, get some water, and have a little chat about our thoughts here, but we're gonna finish up this trail pretty quick. I think we're near the end. The only thing that's really getting me right now is the foot pegs. We've been standing a lot. I've got some really tough boots on, but even so, my uh, my feet are starting to hurt from the small foot pegs. It's my only real gripe is the foot pegs. And even that, like I said before, that's a pretty minimal thing. You know, those are easy to replace. And I'm sure that there are options for this bike. Oh boy, that is good and rocky. 
Ah, we avoided most of it. Hey, you know what? We've got a decent, decent ability to traverse technical terrain, especially given the size of this. Oh, look at that. We can see our tracks from before. Here's where we came through. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get out of here. Hell yeah, that was awesome. Let's wrap up and talk about how the Versus X300 performed. On the highway, I thought it did exceptionally well. Now that's with the caveat that where I live, the highway speed limits are 55 to 60 miles an hour. 65 when you get out of town. And I think for any of those, it performed perfectly fine. Anything 70 miles an hour and below, the bike's not screaming, you're gonna be comfortable, it has adequate wind protection and it has good ergonomics. It's not a bad ride. Plus it has plenty of power to pass, especially at those speeds. You're only about halfway through the rev range, so you've got a lot of RPM in the range where it makes the most power to be able to pass, and it has plenty to do that. You're not gonna scream past people like you're on an R1, but that's kind of a given with this class of bike. That said, I think where it really performs is in the twisties. When we got into the twisty roads and I could really start using that suspension that's a little bit stiffer, a little more well damped, and lean it over, I wasn't scraping peg on the ground. I felt really confident going through the corners. The tipping was pretty fast, and overall it held a really great line. It was super, super fun for riding on twisty roads. And what I would say is that if you wanna maximize your fun, make sure that you keep it in the top half of the rev range. That way you're really where the peak power is for the bike and it's just screaming with a good soundtrack. It actually sounds pretty nice at those high RPMs. I liked the way I could really hear the intake honk. Even on a 300, it sounded pretty good. Now, off-road, I was really surprised. It definitely beat my expectations by a good bit, and as we discussed, it has kind of a strange amalgamation of characteristics that are set up for off-road versus on-road. It has spoked wheels with tubes. That's a much more off-road oriented thing, but it also has five and a half inches of suspension travel and not a ton of ground clearance. That said, I felt like it balanced out pretty well. The suspension that was really sporty on the street was much better off-road than I expected. It's still not like really set up for my weight when you get off-road and you're starting to hit rock ledges and you're going over very rough terrain, but it really performed pretty decent and I felt like the short wheelbase helped mitigate the negative effects of not having a ton of ground clearance where I was able to work over obstacles without bottoming it out. On both of those trails in about an hour of off-road riding, I never once hit the skid plate and on anything. You know, stuff got kicked up into it, but the skid plate never actually hit on anything I was going over. And those are not like the lightest trails. They're fairly, um, they're fairly rough intermediate trails. So I felt like it did a very good job with making it over the terrain perfectly fine. The bars, nice and high, great posture when you're off road. You know, I felt like I didn't need to add risers because I wasn't hunched over trying to get onto the bars. And so I could be comfortable standing upright, but I could also hunch over and get into the attack position uh, for portions of that. And it was pretty comfortable. Now the gearing, I thought when you're on road, the gearing for that bike is really, really short in first gear. Like so short, you're shifting into third by the time you've crossed a large intersection which seems ridiculous to me, but off-road, that first gear is really, really great if you're in a super touch, tough situation and you need a lot of torque and you don't want a lot of speed, um, so you don't have to slip the clutch a ton, you can kind of get it out and then just wiggle your way through technical things very slowly. 
And then getting it into second gear, there wasn't a lot of jerkiness as you rolled on off throttle, but it still had more than enough power to push you up hills and enough RPM range and speed that you could pretty much just run in second gear until you hit something so technical you needed to drop down to first. I thought it was actually a really good match. Now, if you weren't gonna ride the bike off-road and you were just gonna use it for a commuter, light gravel roads, that type of thing, I would say maybe gear it up a little bit so that those first one, two gears are a little more usable as you go around town and work through intersections. You're not working the gearbox quite as much. But if you're gonna take it off-road and you wanna do dual track trails like that, I absolutely think the stock gearing worked out pretty well. So again, I think it's a phenomenal little bike. I really enjoyed riding it. Thank you so much again to the owner who lent it to me for this ride and review. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, if you like this kind of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and I would appreciate it a lot. Till next time, peace.